room tour update video. This is my current setup because my gaming PC fried a while back. So I had to downgrade to an average peasant laptop that I luckily got on sale for Black Friday. Pretty good price for the laptop I'm getting. Got my Samsung tablet right here to watch videos while I try not to get too distracted on this. So annoying. Like, I cannot watch something on this while playing this dumb fucking game. Because I get so annoyed switching between windows. So I got this tablet purely to watch stuff on while I deal with this retarded faggot game. Reclining gaming chair. I literally only got this chair for the reclining feature because I got sick and tired of this chair keeping my back fixed in place. It's like all or nothing, the whole entire chair goes back. But it's like, what if I want to adjust my back? And thus, reclining chair is born. other cardboard box that I used to throw recycling crap in it was getting too gunky and dirty and gross. So I threw that out and now I'm using a different box for recycling. Bed bug traps to keep any bed bugs that are still remaining off my damn bed. Along with the obvious bed bug cover which keeps out the majority of bed bugs because they don't like the cover, which is good. Two dumbbells for Gold's Gym. Not really, don't really care about Gold's Gym, but apparently, I mean, uh, well, I guess some of their equipment is decent, like their dumbbells, for example. They work, and that's all I care about. Nothing else under the bed. No monsters either. I always check under the bed for monster monsters before I go to bed. Each bed leg has the bed bug trap, obviously, so they can't crawl up the damn bed. I was using this black blanket as a cover for the mattress so I won't sweat so much because this bed bug cover is waterproof and it's not very breathable so it makes me sweat. So I need something like a blanket, something that's thick and has better breathability, but it was too big. So I'm trying this smaller blanket I thought it was a full size, but apparently it's a twin, but it still reaches the corners. There's a little bit that it's not covering at the end, a few inches down here, but I don't really care. I'm going to try it anyway, just so this can be flatter and I don't have to keep rolling the rest of the blanket on the corner so it doesn't hang off the edge. Currently waiting for my bed, for my pillow covers to finish drying. Up here, we have a twin mattress and a windproof blanket in case it gets extra cold, which lately it hasn't been too bad. Mostly because I have this heater. Still have the same computer desk that I've had for the past couple of years. I could really take it or leave it. It's a decent desk, but not the best. But I still like it. Cords that I was using for my desktop 
but obviously can't use them on a damn laptop that only has a couple of USB ports. Groovy. This is one of my outdated chargers that uses the old, ancient USB-A. And I'm using it for one of my wireless chargers that is USB-C. But I have not fully transitioned to 100% USB-C. That's the only thing left that I must replace because everything else that I have now is USB-C to USB-C. Lightning to USB-C. USB-C. to USB-C. Braided cables are supposedly more durable and last longer, which is why I got a braided cable. So it doesn't fray and snap and break quicker than a regular cheap cable. Looks kind of like a snake. So, why am I wanting to transition to entirely USB-C? There's a lot of reasons. Like for starters, USB-C is practically taking over. There's also supposedly some sort of ruling being put in place by some sort of, I don't know where, I don't know who's putting this new rule in place, but basically they want to have one simple charging solution for all of the, all of our devices. So basically they want to have USB-C as the standard for charging and transferring data for our laptops, our phones, tablets, controllers, pretty much everything. And they're doing this they're eventually enforcing this rule for one obvious reason. Well, there's two reasons. Reason number one is it's simplified. One charging and data transfer solution for all. And number two, cutting down on a ton of waste because there's so many cables, so many accessories for electronics that just get thrown in the trash it's just it's so much extra waste i mean you can look it up yourself you know look it up, look up the rule i don't even know what i would type to search it up just search something like usb-c being enforced as the standard or something there's some there's articles everywhere saying that they're probably going to enforce it eventually they're already trying to push most companies to go with usb-c but it's not mandatory just yet but they're probably gonna make it mandatory eventually just to cut down on waste and to make things more simple, which is why I figured I would, you know, just kind of future-proof myself and already be ready for it by going USB-C everything. Even my laptop has a USB-C port, so I'm ready for that. And besides, I like USB-C anyway. You know, everything is going USB-C. Pretty much all of the major tablets, the good quality ones anyway, literally every every premium smartphone in existence, even like a bunch of mid-range and entry-level phones, all have USB-C. A lot of laptops have USB-C ports now. Even the gaming desktop that I'm getting soon has USB-C ports. So sooner or later, it's going to be the standard. There's already USB-C on practically everything, even like sports cameras, GoPros, all have USB-C. So I'm not even sure if they necessarily have to strictly enforce the USB-C standard, but it would be nice if they could. So 
everything that comes out from here onward will have USB-C. And then basically, we can just have one cable for everything. So right now, I only have one USB-C cable that's USB-C to USB-C. And obviously, I have my Lightning to USB-C. That came with my phone. That's Those are pretty much the only cables I have. I do have a micro USB, but it's a USB-C to micro USB. I found it on Amazon, Amazon Basics brand, and it is also a braided cable. In fact, since this is a room tour, I might as well show you because it's pretty. But before we get over there, I figured I'd show you what I put in here. Put all my classic games, Nintendo in here, and my PS2 games, just to save some space. Oh yeah. Got my electric scooter over here that's still charging. And apparently this thing just uses a standard 125, 125 volt charging cable which is kind of weird because it looks literally just like a kind of cable that you use to charge your laptop with. So I guess I wouldn't have to really worry about if this cable were to break for whatever reason because this cable is eventually gonna break. It's gonna fray, it's probably gonna get ruined because every time I stop charging it, I gotta stuff the cable back into this cramped little box right here. You know, it's. I mean, it fits easily, but at the same time, you gotta cram it in there. So obviously it's not good for the wires long term. So like if, I guess if I ever break the damn charger, you'll probably just try using a damn laptop cable if it's the same voltage. And you know what makes no sense? Is that this cat is so stupid. Every time I move this thing, she hisses at it nonstop. Like, why are you being a bitch about it? But ironically, this is like your go-to spot. You're always sleeping under this damn thing, but the second this thing moves like two inches, you start freaking out. Like, what is your problem? Stupid fucking cat. And over here, I got cheetah chomps, gluten-free. This stuff is so damn good, and it's actually healthy for you. Why? Because it has fruit and veggie powder along with a lot of other healthy stuff this is actually some pretty healthy cereal and it's reasonably priced too assuming you get it at winco everywhere else it's a little bit pricey but at winco which is where i usually get the environment enviro kids cereal like panda puffs oh, it's pretty good for a mid-sized box and the thing that i like about it is Every time you buy one of these cereals, they donate a small percentage of the profits to help animals. Oh. And then, of course, you got the typical checks over here. Peanut butter checks, of course, even though I think I might have a very mild peanut intolerance. What the hell's wrong with me? Cinnamon checks. I'll probably just stick with blueberry checks from now on and maybe honey nut checks. I'm not sure yet. I don't really care. And then up here. We got a ton of beans, and that's why I'm farting so much, and Smarties. I don't even think there's any sugar in these. There's a little bit of sugar. It's for you know, six grams of sugar for one roll. I haven't even opened it yet, because I don't feel like it. Got my polar ice gum. It's one of my favorite gums. Well, flavor-wise anyway. Otherwise, my favorite gum is anything that whitens your teeth, like Trident White or Bubble Mint. Bubble Mint. Sparkling White. Yeah, the Sparkling White, the whitening Bubble Mint gum. I think that's my favorite overall. Ugh. Then we got Raisinets that have, obviously, milk in it, and I'm lactose intolerant. So, kind of hesitant to open that. Cream of rice. Not really a fan of it. But then again, I ate it completely plain. So go figure. 
and put some something in it. Jeez. We got this Orbit gum. Just felt like trying it because it was a new flavor. More beans. And of course, my favorite cereal ever. Well, my favorite gluten free cereal so far Panda Puffs. Save the pandas. Peppermint tea. Relaxing and refreshing. Raisins. And yes, fun fact, I will not buy any food unless it says gluten-free somewhere on the damn packaging. Sometimes even that's not enough because, you know, it may be gluten-free, but cross-contamination with gluten is a huge problem, damn it. And that's what a lot of these, some of these companies don't bother to state that. They just say gluten-free, but if there's cross-contact, like if the food is made on the same equipment or in the same general environment as other stuff that has wheat and other gluten in it, then... Oh, I have to take a shit. I'll make a part two of this.